Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx by Augustus Le Plédron. I reserve the teachings that may be gathered from the study of Maya monuments for a future occasion, restricting my observations now principally to the memorial hall at Chichen, a chicken dedicated to the manes of Prince Ko by his sister, wife, Queen Mu, and to the ma mausoleum erected by her order to contain his effigy and his cremated remains. In the first she caused to be painted on the walls of the funeral chamber, the principal events of his and her life, just as the Egyptian kings had the events of their own lives painted on the walls of their tombs. Language is admitted to be a most accurate guide in tracing the family relation of various people, even when inhabiting countries separated by vast extents of land or water. In the present instance, Maya, still spoken by thousands of human beings and in which the inscription sculptured on the walls of the temples and palaces in the ruined cities of Yucatan are written, as are also the few books of the ancient Maya, sages that have come to our hands, will be the thread of Aretni that will guide us in the following tracks of the colonists from Mayak, Mayak in their peregrinations. In every locality where their name is found, there also we meet with their language, their religious and cosmogonic notions, their traditions, customs, architecture, and a host of other indications of their presence and permanency and of the influence they have exerted on the civilization of the aboriginal inhabitants. They're talking about the whole world. My readers will judge for themselves of the correctness of this assertion. The reading of the Maya inscriptions and books, among other very interesting subjects, reveals the origin of many narratives that have come down to us as traditions in the sacred books of various nations, and which are regarded by many as inexplicable myths. So they're talking about how it's basically the same stories of the gods, right? Same mythology, right? Reoccurring, duplicating all over the world, repeating, right? And you find it in these same Maya inscriptions, all these myths. For instance, we find in them the history of certain personages who, after their death, became the gods most universally revered by the Egyptians, Isis, and Osiris, who earthly history related by Wilkinson and other writers who regard it as a myth corresponds exactly to that of Queen Mu. Queen Mu is Isis, that's what he's telling you. Her brother, husband, Prince Cole, is Osiris, whose charred heart was found by me preserved in a stone urn in his mausoleum at Chichen. He found this, Augustus, he did archaeological work and he found his statue, all right? Osiris, we are told, was killed by his brother through jealousy. And because his murderer wished to seize the reins of the government, he made war against the widow, his own sister, whom he came to hate bitterly after having been madly in love with her. In these same books, we learn the true meaning of the tree of knowledge. In the middle of the garden, of the temptation of the woman by the serpent offering her a fruit, this offering of a fruit as a declaration of love, which was a common occurrence in the everyday life of the Mayas, Egyptians, and Greeks, loses all the seeming incongruity 
it presents in the narrative of Genesis for lack of word of explanation. But this shows how very simple facts have been and still are made use of by crafty men, such as the high priest Hilkiah, to devise religious speculations and impose on the good faith of ignorant, credulous, and superstitious masses. It is on this story of the courting of Queen Mu by Prince Ak, Ak, the murderer of her husband, purposely disfigured by the scheming Jewish priest Hilkiah, hmm, who made the woman appear to have yielded to her tempster, perhaps out of his spite against the prophetess Hulda, she having refused to countenance his fraud and to become his accomplice in it, the rest, the whole fabric of the Christian religion, which since the advent in the world has been the cause of so much bloodshed and so many atrocious crimes. In these Maya writings, we also meet with the solution of that much mooted question among modern scientists, the existence, destruction, and submergence of a large island in the Atlantic Ocean, as related by Plato and his Timaeus and Critias. In consequence of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, of this dreadful cataclysm in which perished 64 million of human beings, four different authors have left descriptions in the Maya language. Two of these narratives are illustrated. They're contained in the Toronto Manuscript, the other in the Codex Cortesianus. The third has been engraved on stone and relief in place for safekeeping in a room in a building at Chichen, where it exists today shelter from the action of the elements and preserve for the knowledge of coming generations. The fourth was written thousands of miles from Mayak in Athens, the brilliant Grecian capital in the form of an epic poem in the Maya language. Oof. Each line of said poem formed by a composed word is the name of one of the letters of the Greek alphabet rearranged as we have it 403 years before the Christian era under the archonship of Euclides. Continuing the book Queen Mu in the Egyptian Phoenix by Augustus uh, Plongeon, as here in the preface still we're at, fleeing from the wrath of her brother Ak, Queen Mu directed her course toward the rising sun in the hope of finding shelter in some of the remnants of the land of Mu, as the Azores, for instance. Failing to fall, with such place of refuge as she was seeking, she continued her journey eastward and at last reached the Maya colonies that for many years had been established on the banks of the Nile. These were Maya colonies, or as they have called them, Atlantis colonies. But Atlantis was here. It's all the same kingdom. All right. So remember that she says that she reached the Maya colonies that were in the Nile. The settlers received her with open arms, called her the little sister, Ixing, or Ixing, Isis, Isin, Isis, and proclaimed her their queen. Before leaving her mother country in the West, she had caused to be erected not only a memorial hall to the memory of her brother, husband, but also a superb mausoleum in which were placed his remains and his statue representing him. On the top of the monument was his totem, a dying leopard with a human head. So wait a minute, if we're talking about America, right? You saw my Black Panther video, right? We don't have leopards in America, we got jaguars. So it's not a dying leopard, it's a dying jaguar with a human head. Jaguar warrior, right? A veritable finx. America, right? There's no leopards over there. It's jaguars, all right? So she says she made a mausoleum before she left in that country, in America. Now, once established in the land of her adoption, right? Did she order the erection of another of his totems? Again, a leopard with a human head to preserve the memory among her followers? We're talking about jaguar, no leopards. The name inscribed on the base of the Egyptian Sphinx seems to suggest this conjecture. All right, you hear that? Through the ages, this Egyptian Sphinx has been the enigma of history. Has its solution at last been given by the ancient Maya archives? He's telling you that this is the story he found in these archives, in these codices on the walls, that she fled to 
towards that Nile to the colony on the other side towards the east and that she built the Sphinx in commemorance to her brother, a jaguar warrior or a leopard, a so-called leopard with a human head, a jaguar warrior. Has its solution of the Sphinx at last been given by the ancient Maya archives? All right, think about that. Are we going to reveal this? It says, this bird symbol of the principal female divinity is met with in every country where Maya civilization can be traced. In Polynesia, Japan, India, Chaldea, Egypt, Greece, as in Mayak and the ancient city of Tijuanaco on the high plateaus of the Peruvian Andes or Tijuanaco. All right. Anak, Tijuanac, Anak, giant. In Egypt, the vulture formed the headdress of the goddess Isis. All right. The vulture was the headdress of the goddess Isis or Ma'u, whose vestments were dyed with a variety of colors, imitating feather work, feather work, all feathers. All right. Who are these people? Everywhere. It is a myth. All right. So now it says in Mayak only we may perhaps find the origin of this myth all right but in my yak and over here we can find the origin of all those myths of egypt since it was the totem of queen mu whose name means maka the maka the parrot the red one and the colorful one or the blue one we got those here and she is generally pictured in the sculptures and inscriptions by the figure of that beautiful bird all right that's queen maka when they, you see that whose plumage is composed of brilliant feathers of various colors. Goddess Isis as a bird. All right, you see where they get that from? From the Maka, from Queen Mu. On examining the adornment of the Atlantis that supported the altar, we could not help exclaiming, why? This is Burma, and so it is. But it is also America. Yes, ancient America brought back to light after slumbering many ages in the lap of time to show the people of the 19th century all right to show you guys that long 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 ago all right long ago talking about long ago my people your ancestors right he's gonna tell you intimate communications existed between the inhabitants of the western continent and those of asia africa and europe just as they do exist today, all right? And that ancient American civilization, if not the mother of that, of his historical nations of antiquity, all right? The mother, if not the mother, was at least an important factor in the framing of their cosmogonic notion and primitive traditions. Do you hear that? All right? Because of the Maya, these nations became, came with their whole concept of the cosmos, the science, the leaders, and the origin story. All right, their primitive traditions are were based from this mother all right, of historical nations. Of that fact, no better proof can be obtained than by comparing the symbols of the universe found among the Mayas, the Hindus, the Chaldees, and the Egyptians. The simplest is that of the Mayas. It seems to have served as a model for the others. You hear that? All right, we're talking about calendars and all that. Planet, planets, astronomy, all right, the study of stars, luminaries. So the sim simplest is that of the Mayas, all right? It seems to have served as model for the others, as the model for the others that evidently are impl amplifications of it. We find it many times repeated, adorning the central fillet of the upper cornice of the entablatures of the eastern and western Facades of King Khan's palace at Uxmal. All right. It's all over his palace. These hieroglyphic drawings. I think it's these ones he's showing right here. You see these? All right. It's found all over there in his palace. King Khan. The King Khan. Priest King. What? <laughs> this edifice was also residence of the pontiff. A pontiff. The Maya colonists who carried their conceptions of cosmic evolution to India, all right, carried it over to where? India, all right, Prince Maya, remember, taught him that? Fearing least the meaning of this diagram, 
purposely made so simple by the wise men in their mother country, should not be sufficiently intelligible to the new initiates to whom they communicated in the land of their adoption, amplified it and composed the Sri Santara, you see, making each part of easy comprehension. They're telling you where they got the Sri Santara on the Nagas who arrived there, the Mayas. This at first sight may appear like an assertion of private opinion. If it is not, however, it is not, however, this ain't no opinion though. It's gonna break it down. It is the stating of an historical fact, all right? It's a fact, the Maya, all right? That becomes evident when we study said Sri Santara. And notice that the names of its different parts from Aditi, the boundless, to Maya, the earth, are not Sankris, all right? Those ain't Sankris words, but pure American Maya words, all right? Aditi, earth, boundless, earth. That's not Sankris, that's a Maya word, all right? All right, it says here, the Nagas, we have seen, were a highly civilized people, all right? The Nagas were very civilized, building all these temples over there and teaching science and everything, right? Whose rulers held sway over the whole of Hindustan, the whole of Hindustan. When the Aryans established their first colonies on the banks of the Saraswati, later on, we shall see that these Nagas were originally Maya Adepts. All right, later, we're going to break this down. We're going to read this whole book. All right. All right. But these were Maya adepts, these Nagas, who in remote ages migrated from Mayak to Burma, whence they spread their doctrines among the civilized nations of Asia and Africa. Did they spread their doctrines? Hey, maybe. So, again, I'm not promoting the whole idol thing, you know, building idols and all that, you know, or worshiping serpents or anything like that. If you, that's where you're going, nope. But what I'm saying is, these are the Maya adepts. That's the main thing I want you to understand. That these were Maya adepts. All these references, attacks, nagas, you know, all this stuff. Whatever they were doing, spreading their doctrines, you know, to the civilized nations. Were they supposed to? Should they have? How else explain the use of the American Maya language by the Hindus calling Maya the material world? Maya, and even in even in the Hindu language, I. Right? Maya means the material world, the physical, the first land, the, the origin. You understand? The mother, Ma. All right? Ma. Ma, country. Ma, country. Yak. All right? Veretrun, of the ancestor. Country of the ancestor, through which all living earthly things were produced. All right? That's what it means. Yak. Of the ancestor, through which all living earthly things were produced. Ma, Yak, the country. The country where all living earthly things were produced. All right. That's what Mayak is. We know almost nothing about Maya government and little about the daily experience of Maya life. We would know even less were it not for the discovery of this unimposing looking building, which in 1946 was publicized to the world by a filmmaker named Giles G. Healy. For here is the fabled Bonham Park, a name which means in Maya, painted walls. The building contains three rooms, each of which is covered, walls and ceiling, with a virtual encyclopedia of scenes at a Maya court. These murals have enabled scholars to reconstruct much more completely the details of ritual, costume, social custom, and life as it was lived in such centers as Tikal, Copan, and Palenque during the 4th to 9th centuries AD. The pigments have been amazingly preserved by mineral deposits on the plaster, enabling us to make accurate renderings. To see, for example, that though the Maya were not a notably warlike people, they did carry out military raids and took prisoners, perhaps for religious sacrifice. The hallmark of the classic period is polychrome pottery. This, called the Chama vase, shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. So did you guys hear that? He said, these ain't black-skinned Indians. This is black paint. Yeah, can you believe he said that? Dodge your own hijack right here. All right. This called the Chama Vase shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. Shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. Shows not 
black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint.